this this film is a, a kind of a gift from me to you. Uh, I'm not going to overanalyze it, and we have seen uh, so many films that are that have some age to them, but aren't dated. It's a big difference. So we can watch timeless films from all over uh, the brief hundred years of uh, filmmaking. This is a relatively new film, and it's uh, one of the best French films uh, that I've seen in a long time. Now, uh, let me just tell you briefly. When you read a review of a film, and that review begins, oh, this film so-and-so is uh, just like a Hitchcock film, the one thing you know for sure, it is nothing like a Hitchcock film. Um, this film actually does owe a lot to Alfred Hitchcock. And most of us have either this year or last year have seen Hitchcock together. So you know that in Hitchcock, good and bad are in a constant battle with each other and most of the time split into two characters. So um, this fellow here, Roche de Zern, this guy, is the biggest star in French films today, and he's, he's fantastic in this film. Every one of the leads is a major, uh, a major film star in France. The other thing uh, about this film is that it will always stay 10 minutes ahead of you, and that's great because uh, this will keep your attention trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, the other thing about the Hitchcock films that we have studied is that there's always an innocent man drawn into a conflict that um, involves good and evil. And that's exactly the construct of this film. Um, I love French films. There are three things about French films that every French film has. Everybody smokes, everybody stops everything to eat, and women rock, walk around half naked, although I don't think there are half naked women in this film, sorry to say. Um, so Fred Cavalle is one of the post new wave film directors who has taken France by storm. Uh, there was a, an American remake of this film that was, to be kind, horrendous. Um, this is the way to see it. And as a special treat for you, I gathered the entire cast and made them re-record this in Spanish or write Spanish subtitles. That's what. So even though it's in French, and if you don't know French, don't worry. You'll be able to read the film. But I would, I would hope that you can watch it. Uh, it really doesn't matter what they're talking about. What matters in this film is what you're watching. Uh, the other thing is that of all these films, the Born series, Born Identity series, the Mission Impossible series, they all come from this film. Uh, there's, there's a scene in this, in this movie where someone jumps. I don't want to give anything away, but jumps, makes an incredible jump. That jump is not a stunt. Um, that's a real jump, and they really had to convince the actor to do it. He was not happy about it, but he did it. And as this film unfolds, it kind of unfolds a little bit backwards, um, which is one of the charms of the film. Uh, so, without any further whatever, um, Let's take a look at this, and then after, I'll have a brief outro. Take any questions that you have. Um, okay, you're all set? Put, you have your seat belts on? Because this is going to be a trip. This film is very much a Hitchcock film on speed. 
uh, this film goes so fast, there isn't a wasted moment in this film. Also starts in the middle of the film. And uh, um, it took them three weeks to shoot that chase through the subway. Three weeks to make that happen. And most of the people who were in the subway had no idea what was going on. They were running, the cameraman was running. Um, it really shot, shot beautifully. But here's why it's like a, a Hitchcock film. First of all, good and evil keep on switching places in this film. Uh, the person you think is evil turns out to be a good guy. The person very cleverly cast as the husband is not a particularly likable guy. He, he, he's nervous, he, he's, he's jittery, um, panicky, doesn't really know what, what to do. Whereas the guy you think is the bad guy actually turns out to be the good guy. The police, as in all of Hitchcock's films, are useless in this film. There are a hundred police in that station and nobody knows what's going on right in front of their faces. It's very Hitchcock. And, and mostly, in Hitchcock films, the plot doesn't really matter. Uh, for those of you who saw North by Northwest uh, when we showed it here, uh, nobody cares about the microfilm. Here, nobody cares, nobody even knows what he's looking for to, until the end of the film when he's trying to get that combination. And I love that cross-cutting between trying to get the combination, the police closing in on him. All of that works really well in this film. But nobody cares. Um, as you say, it's a action. Uh, nobody cares about that story. Here's what we care about. If that baby is going to make it, if she's going to make it. By the way, these are superhuman beings These uh, in this film. And him, who is the most incredible cure I've ever seen in my life. Uh, this guy is 99% dead, and five minutes later, he's running out and uh, escaping. But uh, that's movies. We care about saving this woman. We don't care about the other stuff. Uh, the heavy guy who gets shot in the stomach, by the way, with a naked woman above him. Um, that is what makes this film different from pure action films, is that there's something else going on while everybody is involved in some crazy extortion plot. Um, we care about an innocent man drawn into a plot of which he has no idea what it's about, why him, and in the course of the development of the story, he and, and Rushdie are kind of um, opposites who attract. They are good and bad, literally black and white, who are versions of the same character. They, they are really, the, the same character split into two. And uh, that is the most Hitchcock-like thing in this film, that by these two switching sides, where the police are after the wrong guy, the good guy, and he becomes a policeman at the end, puts on that band and goes into the station. This constant switching of good guy, bad guy, good guy, bad guy, um, the, the leap from the window, uh, trying to throw the wife out the window. Uh, we don't know who these people are. Uh, the women, um, again, switching places. And then um, that little coda that they ended uh, the film with uh, eight years later, and uh, they're having they're eating, as the French always do, and, and they... Um, he goes in and he sees that, that that guy was let out for Christmas, which I never heard of that before, but okay. Uh, let out for Christmas, and first thing he does is go 
and get a girl. And then all you have to see is the is uh, the other guy, and you you can fill in what happens. I think they say at the end that he hanged himself or something like that. Um, but it doesn't matter. What matters is not what they say, but how they look. Um, that's why I want it, I wanted you to watch the film without being distracted by the subtitles because the way this film is shot is really quite beautiful. Um, uh, the French do this kind of thing really well. Um, they almost dispense completely with the story so that you care about if this woman is gonna make it and the baby and, and um, if, if Rashdi is also gonna get away. And I, I love, there are certain touches that when you watch a film work really well, for example, at, even at the end, Cavaillé, the director who also wrote the film, makes you think that the baby didn't make it, that, that the baby died, and then they wheel the baby in. So it, it's that kind of relief and, and secure ending to what we think is the ending of the film. And that, that's really, that's really a, a nice touch. The other great touch in the film is during the, the, um, the chase uh, in the subway, everybody else is coming up the escalator and uh, the husband is running down the escalator. That's a great image of going against the crowd of going against the flow, of going against normalcy, where you're pushing against the status quo because you are um, both running from and running to someplace that the rest of the world is not. Those kind of touches you cannot do in, uh, in a novel. You cannot do it on stage. Uh, you can't do it uh, on television. You have to do it on film. And that's what makes this film so cinematic. If you watched it again, um, and I showed it to you without sound, you, you would see all the beautiful uh, connections this film makes. Uh, and as I said in the beginning, it stays 10 minutes ahead of you. Uh, the policewoman who's about to arrest the wrong man gets shot. You know, we, we really don't know what's happening there. But again, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is, film is not about the USB. It's about um, the regular Hitchcock themes. The wrong man, an innocent man drawn into a conflict, the battle between good and evil, here split into two characters, they're kind of both sides of the same character. The switching of sides, uh, good becomes evil, evil becomes good, good becomes evil. And um, uh, finally, uh, the justice that is served, we don't care about um, the police. What we care about is the real justice of the film, which is the um, the prevention of that man from being free, the, the real justice of this film. And of course, uh, and the other nice touch is the wife is pregnant again. So we see continual life of these people who survived and the end of life for the people, for the person who tried to have her killed. Um, that, that's really what this film is about. Uh, as I say, Cavalier is very, very hot right now in, uh, in France. Uh, this kind of film, um, very, very French, but very, very Hitchcock. Uh, this is the last time you'll see me don't uh, don't jump up and down and uh, enjoy. Um, 
what I've tried to do uh, this month, this three weeks, is to try to get you to watch. Watch films. Don't listen to films. Don't get distracted by plots. Because plots, it's not the, it's not the story, as my students have heard me say. It's the way the story is told. That, that's what's uh, the most important thing. Uh, and here, you have a very complicated story, but told visually. Um, all the Hitchcock touches, the staircases, constantly in this film, running up, running down, zigzag images. That's what this film is, is all about, a world kind of turned upside down, and then at the end, turned back right side up. I just want to tell you what a pleasure it has been for me to destroy your happiness in watching movies uh, this last three weeks. And uh, I wish you all tremendous success in whatever, whatever you do in your careers. So let me say that and thank you for um, staying, staying wi with me this, this month. So thank you all very much. I'm glad most of you enjoyed it. I appreciate that you didn't enjoy it. And um, au revoir.